Okay, so this week we're going to start looking at network analysis and the network analysis task will be something that you'll need to do for the final project. So when we look at network analysis, we're looking at um, a, a set of pathways. So it can be roads, it can be pipes, it could be electrical uh, wiring, it could be streams. But the idea is that this is a connected network of lines with something moving through it, over it, you know, around it, something like that. So you've got a pathway. And so when you open the uh, geodatabase for this project, you're going to see that the streets are symbolized by a uh, code category. So we've got uh, highways, major streets, and local streets, and you'll see the street code is, is in there. Um, but we're going to work with the streets, that's just with the streets themselves uncoded. So this is just kind of a symbolization that's on your, on your map when you open it. When you look at a street, if it's done correctly, each street is divided into segments. And so I highlighted um, all of the segments of Sundial Street. So I did a search for attribute by name and I found Sundial Drive, sorry. And you can see that there are several uh, sections of this street layer called Sundial Drive. But when I highlight them, it looks like one continuous street segment. But here you can see Sundial breaks at Floyd, at Hidden, at Totem Pole. I don't know what that word is. So if I need, if I want to have a network, I need my network to have a break or a vertice that connects to anything that's coming in or going out. If my sundial street were one long uh, line with no breaks in it, I couldn't model movement along that, along that line. The other thing about road files is that they will often have these fields called left from add, left to add, right from add, right to add, and the name of the street. So here's a section of Alexander Street. And what this does is identify for each segment the left and the right side numbering systems for the street. This feature is one that you would use if you were going to do an address match. So let's say I have a table uh, that is 10224 Alexander Drive, and I want to put that on my map. So what ArcMap geo, geocoding does is look at that address, try to find whether it's on the left side of the street or the right side of the street, and where it is extrapolate between the known beginning address and end address. Okay, so when you were working with data management and changing uh, data, that would be one of the reasons you would do that. You would move your, uh, uh, strip your data so it's in different fields so that you could use it in an address match or, or a geocode situation. The other thing that you'll see in attributes of a street file are um, fields that are needed to calculate distance and time. So in the data that you're given in the street data, you'll see that your data is in a coordinate system um, that has linear units. So you cannot do network analysis with a geographic coordinate system because the segments would give you the angular distance in degrees, but not how many feet or miles that that segment of the road covers. So in the street file, I have a field called meters. So it tells me that Alexander Street is 52.89 meters long. It would take me 0.07 seconds to travel that if I was going 25 miles an hour. So now if I know each segment, the speed for that segment, I can calculate how long it will take to get from one section of Alexander Street to the other section of Al Alexander Street. So um, not only can you do driving speeds, 
and the, the data that you have will have different speeds for different types of roads. When we work through the tsunami project, we're going to calculate it using a walking speed and an average walking speed and how many minutes it would take to walk a section of road. Um, but we're going to work with this today just using the data that's, that's provided. When you do the Oregon project, that data doesn't have meters, minutes, or speed, and you're going to have to calculate those fields in order to run the network analysis. So in order to do that, um, the tutorial talks about how you, how you calculate the minutes by taking the, the shape length um, and divide that by <clears throat> the speed. Um, and since the, the speed in that uh, formula was miles per hour and I want to do minutes, I need to be able to calculate that into, uh, into minutes and then into feet because my shape length was in feet. So a little more than you need to know right now, but it'll come in handy with the other project. So let's look at a little bit of network analysis. I'm going to close that. And um, in the folder, when you open up your network analysis folder, you're going to have a, an MXD, a geodatabase, and the tutorial. And the tutorial is from a workshop I attended in 2009. So this was several versions of ArcGIS prior to 10.2.2. However, most of the directions work really well. The difference I found was that some of the screenshots looked a little different. So some of those uh, interactive windows where you add data don't look exactly the same, but you should be able to, to follow this. So this tutorial is very typical of the kind of tutorials that you might get attending a professional meeting. So I went to a big conference. There was a, a two-hour lesson on ArcGIS, and, and uh, this is what, what I took, and I got the lesson and the data from that. So it talks about all of the pieces of network analysis. There's something called a route solver that helps you identify you know, your route, what's the quickest route if I need to go visit eight schools and drop off lunch boxes. Uh, it gives you a service area. So which schools are within uh, five minutes of the hospital is what you're going to calculate. And which schools are outside that five minutes because that's pretty, pretty important information. Now that's a thing we can use when we look at um, which schools are within the tsunami zone or which uh, assembly areas are uh, within 20 minutes of the, the tsunami outline. So we'll be able to use these service areas in another way. Uh, so we're not going to go through the whole uh, workshop, but you will go, there's a stop sign in here that tells you where to stop. So you're given the data, hospital, schools, retail centers, some streets, uh, city limits, rails, and rail stations. We won't use uh, the rails and the rail stations. And then what you really need to go through very carefully is just reading through the setup of your network data set. So in your uh, feature data set, there is, or in your geodatabase, there will be a feature data set called transportation. And in that transportation are your street file. Is your street file? Are your streets. <laughs> and then you're going to create what's called a network uh, a network and that network has to be in the file with your transportation in your transportation data set with your streets and that's critical so they go through setting this up um, you come up with this uh, file of edges um, and then you have a solver that works through your your uh, network analysis you'll uh, look at you'll load the network analyst toolbar and you have to make sure that your um, extensions are on and I'll show you that in just a second. So here is the route solver and then this part one is setting up your network data set and you'll have to follow that just to the letter. Okay so if you don't set up your data set right um, then it doesn't run. Uh, so you'll you'll want to go through that. When you go through the Oregon data set you'll probably need to refer back to this and try to match your Oregon setup as closely as you can to, to this one. 
let's see, what else do I have in here? It talks all about uh, different elements of this, uh, where the toolbox is. One of the things, once you get ready, you're going to need to do something called integrate. And integrate is a way that it looks for gaps in your data where your roads don't connect and it fixes those. So it does a build on your integrate. So if you have a little gap, it can fix that for you. If you have big gaps, it can't, um, but it can show you where those gaps are. So then you're going to set up your network data set. It says it, this part takes about 30 minutes to, to get that set up. Um, shows you what to include and then um, talks a little bit about Z elevation. So in some data sets, you'll have a Z elevation, which lets you model overpasses and underpasses. So Z means um, that, that X, Y, and Z, so the, the elevation uh, coordinate. The Oregon data will not have Z elevation, so you're going to have to model everything as if it was just flat roads and no overpasses and underpasses. This also lets you uh, look at one-way streets, so you uh, are, and I don't think the Oregon data has one-way street setups. So it just goes through all of these setups, just kind of follow that, and then part two is working with the solver. So let me see if I can launch mine. Um, oh, you can see I played with it a lot, so I'm going to do Vegas number three. What I found is you'll have to um, reconnect your data because it should open up broken. And you can set that up. And this will take a minute. OK. So um, you want to, oh, I forget where this, oh, you're just going to think. You want to make sure that when you look at your custom extensions, that network analyst is on, is on. At home, this isn't on for me, and I have to make sure I turn it on. And then you want to add your network analyst toolbar. So you go up in this gray area and find, um, anybody see it? There it is, LMN, it's alphabetical. And then I'm going to dock that toolbar here. So if I want to. Um, so I created some uh, service areas. Those are those polygons that you see. And those are uh, areas, schools that are within five miles. That's a five mile of a hospital buffer along the road. Um, so from any hospital, it could get to all of those gray areas within five minutes. And then I found the schools that were, that were in that. Um, the network analyst window, so if I click that, I um, let me guys remove that service area. And those are all of my polygons. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to create a new route. And um, in my routes, I want to make some stops. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load the stops, load the stop locations, or not. There, it's just being really slow. And so let's say I want to stop at all of the schools. Well, let's just, I'm going to do the hospitals. Oh, I'm going to stop at, I'm going to go shopping. So I'm going to stop at all the retail centers. So I'm just going to say I want to load those as my stops. And so there's my retail centers. I have 26 places to shop today. Um, and then I can set up. Uh, when I click right here in that solver or my properties, I can set up, um, I want to travel either the shortest time or the shortest distance to get to all of those shops. So, so time, is time, okay, so I'm going to say I want to shop the quickest I can. And because I'm walking, I don't care about one-way streets. And um, let's see, I'm going to, uh, U-turn, sure, I can U-turn because I'm walking. Okay, so now I'm going to ch choose OK, and then I'm going to hit the solver. And the solver has made my route. I'm going to, and let's see how long it's going to take me to walk that around Las Vegas and shop. Only, uh, 
oh, if I'm driving, I can't walk it because I did. I was using driving speeds, so I could visit all twenty whatever. Let's see how many stops did I have. Twenty six. I can visit all twenty six shopping centers、um, in two hours and eight minutes, and only drive seventy four point nine miles. That's assuming. Everything works, but oh my gosh! Guess what happened?、Um, there was there was a parade. No, there was a wreck. So let's say I'm going to set a wreck right there, and I can't get through that. Now, if I don't put that actually on the street, it doesn't work. So I think I'm close enough to the street. Let's let's solve it and see if I go around that. Oh yeah, see it rerouted me. So、um, it should. You just have to zoom in. I don't think it will actually snap, but I can. I can say I can put all these barriers in and resolve this. And、uh, see that one didn't get snapped to the street, so it let me go through. Let's try it again. There we go. God, I don't know where I'm going. Let's see if there's any way to go to all those shops now. Oh. Actually, it was shorter. <laughs> yeah, so that's ba basically the solver and the blocks. So you could see, in instead of twenty-four, twenty-five、uh, miles per hour on these streets, if we had a、uh, a speed of、uh, what a third? What do people walk? Twenty minutes an hour for let's say a middle-aged woman carrying a baby. Okay, so twenty minutes per mile, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you could calculate that instead of this, instead of you know have it pick a different speed field and say, okay, you're not getting out, you're not going to shop. It's going to take you two weeks to go hit all those stores.、Um, I think I did solve it, right? Oh, I'd have to calculate that field. So I'd have to go back in and add a new field that would calculate that. Right? No, no. You have to make a new field, and then do a new network that's choosing which field to look at. Okay. Now, one of the things that I noticed is if I've created my data, and I had to edit a street. Once I edit that street, my network is broken, so I have to delete my network and rebuild it. Okay, and that's you may run into that with the Oregon streets because you're going to clip those Oregon streets to a smaller area, and you may find that, or well, I know what it was in the、uh, on the coastal tsunami project, people wanted to make paths from the end of the street down to the water, because people would be walking that route, and so they had to、um, throw away the network, make those streets or pathways. Then do the integrate and build, and then do their network, right? So that those new paths were included. Okay, so I think this will work for you really well.、Um, I went through the whole thing、uh, the other day, and I had no problems with it. What I have given you,、um, okay, where did I put it? Network, network, network. Directions. Okay,、um, there's a little direction folder that talks about some stuff. Some of the they talk. They call this、uh, network analysis, and I call it network Vegas. So when they say look in the network analysis geodatabase, you're going to look in the network Vegas. Okay, it'll be pretty obvious.、Um, information about roads, and within the text, the tutorial, there are 13 questions、uh, or screenshots I want you to capture. Okay, and so、um, they're identified with a Q and a number. So be on the lookout for those. In fact, you might want to just read through the tutorial first and kind of highlight those for yourself, so that you don't miss them and have to redo stuff. So there's 33 pages.、Um, a lot of it is big spaces. Okay, they didn't try to save paper because they didn't care. <laughs> and、uh, there it is. So you know, a, an awful lot is also just、uh, directions and setting up. So,、um, you know, so almost half of it is just getting, getting you used to what the pieces are, 
and talking about that. And then it gives you some examples to check. But they don't try to wrap their images. They're all just kind of, so don't let the 33 uh, things scare you. So there's question three, question four, things like that. I, th I, th I think this is really fun, and it's kind of powerful when you start thinking about what you can do with, with something like this. So this is due on Friday. And then the Oregon uh, data where you actually just have to download your own data, fix the uh, projection, and set up your own network is due on Tuesday.